Today we're going to look at five creative ways to use an MP3 player module without Arduino. We'll be using the DYHV20T MP3 player module. I bought it on Amazon for fairly cheap. There is a little bit of work to be done with this board. There is some light soldering you need to do. You need to solder the terminal pins for speaker and for power. You also need to solder the input output header pin. Other than that, you can be up and running pretty quick. You need an SD card. We'll go over all that. But uh, today we're going to do it without Arduino. And then I'm going to do a video with Arduino. That sounds really good without Arduino so far. I can only assume that this is really good with Arduino. Here are some of the items I'll be using in the video today. Of course, the main item is the MP3 player module. It's got a built-in 20-watt Class D amplifier, which is compatible with a 4-ohm and 8-ohm speaker. I'm using 8-ohm, and it sounds great. It also supports MP3 in WAV formats and has a 3.5 millimeter audio output for direct earphone or speaker connection, which we'll also take a look at. It's got seven work modes that you can adjust using the onboard configuration pins, which gives it great flexibility when it comes to integrating different projects. It has an onboard potentiometer for volume control. It also has an onboard LED power indicator, and these are the input output pins we'll be working with today. It supports up to 32 gigabytes on micro SD cards for storing large number of audio files. And you can always update your audio files off of the SD card. You can use an SD card adapter to add or remove audio files, or you can connect directly to your computer to do this by using a micro USB cable. I found that directly connecting your board to your computer to swap out songs is much slower than if you were to use an SD card adapter, but if it's the only thing you got, it does work. The file should be named in a five digit format like 00001.mp3 and 00002.mp3 and so on. This format allows the module to recognize and trigger specific files. And be sure to use FAT16 or FAT32 format on your SD cards. You may have noticed the DIP switch, which stands for Dual Inline Package Switch. It's a small set of switches within a single package. The package is the red box, the red box that houses the DIP switches. And they're often used on circuit boards to configure settings without the need for reprogramming or external connections. Each switch in a DIP switch package can be toggled individually. In this case, we're flipping them either on or off. And the real benefit of these DIP switches is configuration flexibility. You're able to enable or disable functions and select modes and adjust output settings just by manually flipping switches. They're also simple and reliable. They don't require frequent changes and they're easy to identify because these switches are often numbered and that allows specific positions of the switches to correspond to a particular setting that you need. And with that said, our first setup is gonna be standard MP3 mode with switches one and three on and two off. Here's a wiring diagram with a stock photo of the MP3 board. I have three buttons. They're connected to IO0, 1, and 2, and a common ground. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit because it's too loud. When you press the IO0 button, the songs play continuously in order. When you press button 3, it pauses it. You press it again, it'll resume. If I continuously press button 1, it'll skip to the next song. If I press button 2, it'll go back to the previous song. Here I'm going to add a button and then switch it over to combination mode 0, where songs are triggered by combinations from the I.O. pins 0 through 7, where each unique combination of low and high states represents a specific song. And as you can see, all the switches are switched to the off position. Here I'll press button 1 and then button 2 and then button one and two together. I only have four buttons, but I could add a button to every pin and have a greater combination of songs. Our next setup is a limit switch as a trigger, and I put that on pin one. As you can see, pins one and two are on, three is off. That is independent mode one. In this mode, each I.O. pin, zero through seven, independently controls a specific song. And this allows up to eight songs to be played individually by triggering each pin. And each song will be played in a continuous loop as long as the pin is held in an active state. And as soon as you release the pin, the module will stop the song immediately rather than waiting until the end of the track. So I could connect eight different limit switches to each pin and play eight different songs. And this mode is useful for creating a responsive sound that needs to stop on command. Independent mode zero allows each pin to independently control eight songs. In this mode, one and three are off and switch two is on. Each pin is assigned a specific song, which allows you to play up to eight different songs, and once the song starts, it plays to the end even if you release the pin. 
Now we'll use a reed switch as our trigger. That's a type of electromagnetic switch that operates based on the presence of a magnetic field. And when the magnet comes close to the switch, the magnetic fields force the metal reeds to come together and it closes the circuit. Just like this. Sticking with independent mode zero, I used an NPN resistor with my motion sensor to trigger songs when motion was detected. This was a failure with motion detection, but I wanted you to hear how good the sound was when you connect the speaker to the audio port. The pins on this MP3 board are by default set to high and they trigger when they go low, so it makes motion detection kind of tricky to use on here. But I don't expect it to be a problem at all when I use it with Arduino. I want to show you the re-triggering that I encountered here. In this mode, the song should play to the end after it's triggered, but as you can see, it keeps re-triggering even during the song. So. I got better results using a relay, still not perfect, but much better than this. I tried different circuits to try to prevent the motion sensor from re-triggering during music, but I was unsuccessful. We're going to stick with independent mode zero and try a relay. I'm using a two channel relay because it's the only 12 volt relay I have and I want to power everything from one 12 volt source. I have a 12 volt relay here and 12 volt is the absolute maximum you want to put through the PIR uh, motion sensor and the MP3 board is compatible with 12 volts so this actually works pretty well. I was able to get the full song to play without interruption after reconnecting everything and adjusting the time delay on the motion sensor to the length of the song. It's not ideal, but it does work. But if the audio file is longer than the time delay allows on the motion sensor, you may get re-triggering if it detects motion. So I can't create motion activated sound files here, but I think it's better suited for Arduino, which we'll do next. For the next setup, we're going to use the TSOP 4838IR receiver, and I'm going to use this to trigger the songs by using a remote. And we're going to stick with the independent mode zero. This small IR receiver detects IR signals modulated at 38 kilohertz, which is a standard frequency for most IR remote controls. It's widely used in TV remotes, audio systems, and other remotes you may have around your house. You just need to hold the button down until the song starts. And I can do this with most buttons on the remote. Overall, I think this thing sounds great. It's easy to use for beginners because it's mostly all put together. You just need to do a little bit of soldering. The onboard amplifier does make the 8-ohm speaker pretty loud, but I do like the sound of the Bluetooth speakers I connected using the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And if that's an option for you, that's what I'd stick with. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you found this useful. If so, be sure to like the video by clicking the thumbs up. Also share it with somebody who may find it useful and consider subscribing. And I'll see you again with another video.